Okay, this is going to be a quick tutorial to show you how to use Google Classroom. First thing you need to do is make sure that you are logged into your Google Apps for Education account, so your school account. When you're in there, you have a couple of ways that you can get to Google Classroom. First of all, you can type it in the search bar and it will come up this way. And here's what you'll see and it'll ask you to go to the classroom. That's the first way you can get in, so I'm going to start with that. The second way, the most convenient way, is if you go to apps and you go into the app store, and you only have to do this once, I'm going to select Google Classroom and up here it's free. I'm going to add it to my apps. You can see it loaded down here. So that next time I open it, Classroom is right there for me to directly get into on a daily basis. So I've got my classroom open. You can see I already have five different classes set up. When you start out, this screen will be blank. You will see the three little menu bars on the left here and the home screen. And over here on the right, you have your email address and your plus button. The plus button is what you're going to use to create a new class. So when you click on that, you have two options, create a class or join a class. Now, for the most part, when you're going to be creating a class, you may also be joining a class, perhaps somebody's going to be doing a, some professional development and you're part of that and there's going to be things posted there for you. you. That might be one reason why you're going to join a class. From a student perspective, they're going to be seeing join a class and I'll go through how, they'll, how they will join the class that you have set up for them. So let's go ahead and create a class. I need to give it a name. I'll call it test class and I can give it a section number as well. And it's going to take a few seconds to create this class for me. And while it's doing that, it's actually creating a folder in my drive for everything to do with this class. So this is the kind of generic classroom that you'll get set up. And over here on the right hand side, I can change this theme. At the moment, you can't upload your own pictures, but there's enough here to kind of keep you busy. Um, select the one you want and it changes. And this is what's going to look like when your students enter your class and obviously when you're, when you're editing it as well. So the first thing you might want to do is add an announcement. So I'm going to put a message here. Welcome to the class. Perhaps I want to link it to a YouTube video or um, a Google form. Um, maybe I have more than one class. If I want to ever post something to more than one class at the same time, this drop down menu here, because I have several classes set up, it will allow me to check which classes are going to see this message or any assignments. So similar to what we've done before in the past with Edline. That's, that's an option for you there. So and welcome to the class and I'm not going to um, attach anything right now. I'm just going to post that so students will see that. They also do have the ability to comment as well if they want to ask a question, um, say hi or anything else. You might have to go over appropriate um, behavior in that domain. Over here on the right hand side we have three dots. These are like your edit buttons. If you click on those you can either edit what you've announced or your, your assignment or you can also delete it as well. Okay, so let's say I want to go ahead and we can go back a step here. So the class code, there's a couple of ways that your students can join the class. Number one, you can invite them by having their email addresses. Now that's going to require you to import them directly which is going to be a little bit time consuming. The best way to do it is to give students the code to join. So I would do this all at once with your entire class, have them log into their Google Apps account. It needs to be their school account. Um, the domain will not allow people to use their um, email addresses from outside the domain to join. So they're going to have to use their school email address. And they can enter in the class code and they will then show up in your student list under here. If the student leaves or is transferred out, you can remove them from the class. And you will also, when you have emails in there, you will have the option to email the class as a whole or email a group of students in the class regarding um, the class that you're teaching. So if I go back to the screen here, let's say I would like to um, create an assignment. I'm going to give the assignment a title. Perhaps I want my students to do some goal setting. It defaults automatically to the next day. So right now it's August 28th. This is defaulting to August 29th. I'm going to change that to September the 4th. 
and I can also add a time option if I want to as well. And I'm, I'm going to leave that in there. So perhaps I want my students to watch a video on goal setting. Perhaps I want them to visit a website. Um, maybe I have something I want them to read. In this instance, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to send them a worksheet that I want them to complete on goal setting. So I have an assignment already set up in my Google Drive account. So I'm going to click on the Google Drive icon. And I've you know, obviously got all my folders and stuff. But I'm just going to search by typing goal setting. And it comes up pretty quickly. So this is attached here now. Now over here, there's three different options that the students can have. They can view the file, they can edit it, and I can make a copy for each student. Now if I make a copy for each student, every student in the class will be sent this worksheet. They will have ownership of the worksheet, they can complete it, and they will have a button on their account that says Turn In. When they click on the Turn In button, that's going to come back to you as a teacher and the student loses the rights to edit that file. They can still view it, but the ownership is transferred to the teacher. So if you have a submission date, they've turned it in, they can't then make any changes to the file. Let's say that you would like the student to make further revisions. It's a, it's a draft copy. You can send it back out to the student at a later date. They can make final revisions, and then again, they will have that turn it in option. Where the owner, once they've clicked on that, it'll be transferred directly to you. So I'm going to make a copy for every student and I'm going to assign this. And it'll take a few seconds to do this. All right, so now we can see that there's an assignment. So students come into the classroom, they can see there's an assignment, they can see there's a worksheet attached here. I also can see as a teacher who's done it and who hasn't done it. Now, I don't have any students assigned to this class, um, so therefore these numbers are zero. If I need to make an adjustment to this assignment, I can either edit it or I can delete it. The one thing I cannot do in edit is add an additional class after I've put the assignment in. So let's say I actually wanted this to go to two different classes. I can't do that now. I need to do it as I set it up. So I'm going to change it to save. And that is pretty much it. Now, over here on the left hand side, there's three more little tabs, the classroom menu. If I click on that, I get my home page where all my classes are and right now I have the list of all the classes I have set up. I can click on one of those, go set it up uh, or add something to that or I can go to my home point where I can see everything in here. The three little buttons on the side of each class that you can see here again gives you an option to either rename it or to delete it and I have a folder here that um, opens the folder that Google Classroom created for this particular subject, the um, Adventure and Outdoor Pursuits Period 10 class. So any, any documents pertaining to that class will be stored in that folder. I didn't have to set it up, it did it automatically for me. So that's a very brief overview of Google Classroom. Um, the nice thing is you can set this up for both semesters. It's, things will not disappear from one semester to another. You can share assignments between classes um, and as Google Classroom um, gets developed further, more and more features are going to be added. There is in the bottom right hand corner of Google Classroom, you probably can't see it on the screencast, there is a send feedback button. If there's anything that you see that you'd like to have added to Google Classroom, click on that feedback button and enter it. Google are responding to all the thousands and thousands of requests that are coming through, many of which, of course, are the same. For example, the ability to have a classroom um, calendar embedded in the website, um, or the ability to, um, what was the popular request? Or the ability to complete Google Forms directly in the Google Classroom situation. Right now, you can still add them as a link. Okay, I hope that's helped and please uh, contact me if you want any help in setting this up. Thanks.